What's up guys, the Strong Boys 19 here. This is going to be my next movie review after half of a year of the Halloween franchise. I would like to say I apologize that I did not come back to the franchise pretty much around the time that I had reviewed Halloween 6. If you have not seen my review of the previous films that I've done, please check them out. But right now it is time to go into the seventh installment to the franchise, which is Halloween H2O 20 years later. Now this film was made three years after Halloween 6, which was sadly the last film to have Donald Pleasance as Dr. Sam Loomis. But with this movie, I would definitely say it is a noticeable presentation that this film was made around the time that other horror films had been made to younger audiences like the Scream franchise for example and that those filmmakers were inspired heavily and fans of this particular horror franchise and around this time of the movie's release the original Halloween film celebrated its 20th anniversary. The main cast for this movie, Jamie Lee Curtis once again re-inspires her role as Laurie Strode for the first time after Halloween 2 from 1981. Also stars Adam Arkin, Michelle Williams, Adam Hanbird, LL Cool J and Jodie Lynn O'Keefe etc. The budget for the movie was $17 million and the box office was $55 million. Dimension Films still owns the rights to the franchise. It was directed by Steve Miner. Paul Freeman did the production and Robert Zapier did the screenplay along with Matt Greenberg as well as the story with Kevin Williamson, though he is uncredited. The music was done by John Ottman as well as Marco Beltrami. So the film opens up with a house that has been burgled into lots of damages and pieces of paper, documents everywhere that was owned by Marion Chambers, a character that was a former colleague of Dr. Sam Loomis, once again played by Nancy Stevens, who played the same character from the first two Halloween films. And two students decided to help her out. One of them goes inside the house to investigate and tells her that the coast is clear and all good. And after that, she goes into the house. Power had been cut off, had no idea how to get help, decides to go to the next neighbor's house and sees that the two students had been killed off. So that means Michael Myers is back with vengeance, find and seek revenge for hunting down Laurie Strode. So as with Jamie Lee Curtis's performance goes, as Laurie, she suffers with a big amount of anxiety and stress, post-traumatic stress disorder, and she is a single mother, is an alcoholic, lives with her son, named John Tate, portrayed by Josh Hartnett, and her occupation, headmistress of Hillcrest Academy, which is a private boarding school. She's also in a relationship with one of the people that works there, a guidance counsellor by the name of Will, Played by Adam Arkin. There is quite a lot of scenes in this film that there is difficult relationship scenes and tensions between both Laurie and her son. So this film is easily, you know, not as very suspenseful and as dark as the previous Halloween films. Obviously because a lot of the scenes in the film do focus on Laurie going through difficult times with her son, telling her that Michael is dead, he's not going to come back. Speaking of Michael Myers, Chris Jorand did the acting portrayal of Michael. For him to be the next actor to play Michael, I think he is, you know, really one of those actors that deserves more credit. Because in my opinion, even though that he's not like one of the most beloved, I think he did a very good job portraying Michael Myers in this film. As the film goes on, it's nothing like the previous Halloween films in a lot of the ways that we all have seen before. Because a lot of the films previously were much more dark and intensifying, despite obviously one of the films after the first two being 
very divided for many. There were moments in this film that I thought were pretty stale and safe. One of the dialogues, younger characters felt, you know, not as well polished and one of the characters doesn't really connect with me but weakest part and the worst part actually about this movie if you actually pay attention to the mask it is not just one mask there were multiple masks worn in this one film and i do not understand why they got away with that but that is the biggest gripe that i have with this movie also, speaking of the title, I don't really like the title at all. The term of H2O, just because of the original film celebrating 20 years, is very misleading. This should have been Halloween 7, or Halloween 20 years later, because after the events from the first two films with Laurie Strode's difficulties, this should have been just titled differently. Well, anyhow, as the film goes on, with the relationship that Laurie has with Will, she tells him about her true self, about going through the difficult times and the aftermath of the horrors she went through when she was escaping away Michael's brutal attacks. I thought that was a pretty neat part of the film, but at the same time we have seen that. But I thought that was a, a pretty good addition to those that have not seen the earlier films in a way because as I said this was at a time that the Halloween franchise was released to a much more of a younger audience but uh, I do give the filmmakers credit and the writers for doing something like that. Jamie Lee Curtis's performance out of all of the other cast members did easily the best job. Her acting was perfect, shows a lot of true fear and a lot of real disturbing performances from the character. And I thought some of the younger generation of cast members did good jobs. I thought a few of the kills to this film were lackluster because obviously Halloween 6 being like the most violent and have one of the, the best ever kills like the earlier films, this one doesn't really plan these killings out that greatly as the previous ones but I thought some of them were decent. I really liked a lot of the action sequences. Laurie just had enough, got pissed off, grabbed an axe, screaming out Michael's name, just seeking out revenge to attack her brother for good. It was a very very good part of the film just to see Laurie going into an enraged mode of fighting Michael Myers and after Michael's defeated his body was placed inside one of the vans and Laurie steals one of them when the scene of various ambulances arrive at the scene. And as Michael awakens inside the body bag he was in, she crashes the van. I like the part that he reaches his hand out to Laurie but then Laurie decides to use the axe to chop off Michael's head and see his head moving around from the grass and sirens coming by at the scene and then the credits roll. That was a really good ending to the franchise at that point. So I think Halloween H2O 20 years later is in my opinion one of those films that I would tolerate a lot more than obviously Halloween 6 and Halloween 5. That's just my opinion. It is not one of those films that is very well regarded as one of the best in the franchise. But I think this is a really good film, despite the drawbacks that had to be said. So, in a nutshell, I would definitely put this in as one of those, pretty much the middle of how I would rank the franchise. But with that being said, I am going to give this film 4 stars out of 5. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll keep you guys posted for more videos in the near future.